everyone and welcome back to the channel. So you guys know how I've been saying for well over a year now how much I've been wanting to explore new mediums like wash, water mixable oils, and charcoal? Well today I'm very excited to announce a new mini series called Let's Learn. In this four part series I'm going to be seeking out resources on how to utilize these new to me mediums starting with a very logical transition from watercolor, gouache. You guys have seen me work a little bit with gouache here on the channel before, but my experimentation with this medium has been just that, experimentation. I have not taken a class on this medium or seen much of anything outside of YouTube on how to use this type of paint, so that brings me to today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online educational community and one of only a few brands that I would ever be willing to accept a sponsorship from here on the channel. Being deeply rooted as an educator myself, I believe that having access to an accessible and affordable platform to learn about art, design, business, technology, and more is just a really incredible idea. At less than $10 a month on an annual plan or $15 a month going month to month, Skillshare's premium membership offers unlimited access to thousands of classes at a fraction of the price that you would pay for a traditional course. One of the things that I'm so passionate about with this platform is how supportive they are not only of their students, but also of their teachers. They've welcomed me with open arms, both as a teacher, as well as as a YouTube content creator with this sponsorship, which is allowing me to create this new mini series for all of you guys free here on YouTube. If after watching this video, you want to give Skillshare a try, there is a link in the description below for you to gain access to Skillshare's premium membership for two months, absolutely free for the first 500 students who sign up. While you're over there, be sure to check out my own Skillshare classes, as well as classes from other familiar faces that you know from our beloved watercolor community, like Arlisha, Sade, Kat, Troopty, Vanessa, and many more. In this series, I'll be seeking out classes on Skillshare that will teach me more about a specific medium. I'll first do some exercises from that class, and then hopefully I'll be able to use the skills and techniques that I've learned to create my own artwork in this new medium. Today I'll be using Schminka Hordam gouache straight from the tube. Gouache is in the same family as watercolor, but it tends to be more opaque, vibrant, and it dries with a matte finish. The binder is still gum arabic, so it allows easy cleanup unlike the polymer-based acrylics or oil-based oil paints. Schminka is one of the pricier options, of course, but M. Graham, Da Vinci, Holbein, and Windsor Newton all make reputable gouache as well if those are more affordable and readily available for you. I have this flat little palette that I got off of Amazon, which I'll link in the description below, as well as a ragtag assortment of old brushes, namely two different sizes of flat brushes, one small blunt round that doesn't really come to a point anymore, and one pointed detail brush. I'll be painting in my Hannah Mule watercolor book, so let's get started. So if you've been around my channel or on Instagram for long, you'll probably already know that I have tried everything I could do to get around this. I have stubbornly tried putting several different brands of gouache into several different palettes with little success, except for the Mission White Class Hybrid Gouache, which I have in another video. I may not know much about gouache, but what I have figured out is that I like to use it in a very thick consistency. While gouache can be put into a palette and used like watercolors, I have found that it is nearly impossible to replicate that thicker, juicy consistency from a pan once that paint has dried. I surrendered to the tube, and while I don't enjoy constantly stopping to get fresh paint on my palette, I do find that the overall painting experience is much more enjoyable for me. Skillshare offers a lot of very specific classes on how to paint certain things with gouache, and there are a lot of cute ideas, but to get my general bearings on gouache as a whole medium, I turned to Leah Gorn's class called Beyond Watercolor, Learn to Paint with Gouache, which seemed pretty perfect for this exercise. Leah jumps right into the fray with her first demonstration, but you know me, so I had to hit pause and play around with my new materials for a bit. I wanted to gain my new bearings on consistency and application of the paint onto the paper, as well as get a feel for the brush with these paints. 
After I did that, then I was ready to go ahead and paint alongside her. We painted Peaches, she from a real peach in front of her, and me from a stock image on Pixabay because sadly, peaches are no longer in season. One of the first things that was very apparent about learning gouache is that generally speaking, it is recommended that you start with your darker colors first and build up layers of midtones and highlights on top of that. This is the opposite rule of thumb from what we typically see in watercolor since the white that we use is the white of our paper and you have to be really careful to reserve that. In gouache, laying down those dark colors first also helps the highlights to sit on top of them rather than being set behind them, which will allow for a more three-dimensional image. The second huge difference is that you'll need a lot of white paint with this medium. If you're coming from acrylics or oils, this won't be a big surprise or a change from you, but coming from watercolor where we almost never use white except perhaps for some finishing touches, it is a big change. Every time you want to alter a color, you have to add another type of paint, be that white, black, or another hue. To put this into the perspective of watercolor, imagine only ever being able to paint with the mass tone of a tube color. You'll find yourself quickly stuck, right? Well, now imagine that every time you dilute your paint with water, you're now instead adding white paint. And there you have gouache. I alluded to this earlier with my own preferences for working with this medium, but I'll state for the record that you technically can water down gouache, but the consistency is not going to be the same as it is with watercolor. There will be more separation of the pigment from the binder, though arguably you might find the colors to remain more vibrant than they would with their watercolor counterparts. However, if I were going to paint like I would with watercolor, there's really no point to me making this particular video. The thing that really calls to me in wanting to experience this medium is that it is thicker than watercolor and that you can layer it like you can with acrylics or oils without the hassle that those other mediums pose with cleanup. Coming back around to the white paint, there are two main types of white to consider here. Zinc or Chinese white is made from PW6. This is the white pigment that you'll often find in pre-made watercolor palettes as well and is the one that I'm using here on the first example. This is a light, fast, and more transparent white that can be used as a mixing white to subtly create lighter hues of other colors without drastically changing their overall color profile. You can see here in the first peach that the colors that I mixed with the zinc white did have a difficult time layering cleanly. I don't mind this for the darker and mid-tone layers, but when I tried to add the highlights, I definitely felt like I was just muddying everything up. This is probably due in large part to my inexperienced hand, but being the first time that I've used this zinc white, I wanted to go ahead and share that initial experience. In the future, I'll be experimenting more with this color to mix other hues on my palette, but maybe not for the layering tool that I typically would go to white for with gouache. While the Skillshare class demonstrated several practices for painting the peach in different types of layering techniques, I wanted to appeal more to my curiosity of how these different whites interact. So for the second peach, I actually changed things up and used my titanium white compared to the zinc white in the first one. I pulled out a tube of Windsor & Newton gouache that I bought really early on in my watercolor adventures to use as highlights in paintings and got back to work. Titanium white made from PW4 is your more opaque, very bright, almost blue white. It has a much higher tinting strength than your zinc white, so you'll hardly need any of it to alter the color the same amount. And while I'm sure not everyone will agree on this, this is where I found my happy. You do have to be really careful not to combine a mixture that has both white and black in it because that will make gray and create a really dulled effect. But aside from that, I really love the textures that you can get with this more opaque medium. I'd love to know which of these two peaches you prefer though, so let me know in the comments below and your thoughts about why that is. Finally, I wanted to question for myself why it's recommended to paint with darker tones before you lay down lighter ones. I started the third peach with a light pastel yellow mixture and then built up the other colors around it. Two things became quickly apparent. First is that everything was dulled down, especially when the darker colors were added once again because of that gray factor. Second, and not surprisingly, even when I went in with pure color over the lighter areas, nothing ended up as vibrant as it had been on the previous versions. While sometimes we may want a pastel effect, we probably don't want it all the time, and this is a very important lesson learned. The next exercises in this class were on flat graphic designs, which gouache is well known for, but boy, oh boy, was I out of my element. You know when you go to play Pictionary and everyone assumes that you're going to do well because you're an artist? 
Well, I've said it before and I'll say it again, that doing something really beautifully, cleanly, and quickly is not the same thing as whatever it is I do on a daily basis. It is a completely different skill. It is incredibly difficult. And I have the utmost respect for artists who excel in this graphic style. The first of these exercises was to lay down two flat washes of color, one for the strawberry and one for the strawberry top, which sounds easy, but I cannot tell you how bad I wanted to add shadow and highlight to make up for the fact that I apparently can't paint simple shapes. The next was line art, and well, I probably don't need to tell you how that went because y'all know I'm not a very strong line artist. Once again, those strawberry tops made me look like a fool, and it was much more difficult than it seemed. Finally, though, we combine the two, and I do have to say that this was my favorite. It's my favorite graphic style when I see others doing it as well, but I also really enjoyed that by combining the two elements of the flat washes and the line art, it took more pressure off of me to make each individual component like a really stellar standalone piece. These were just for practice for me, but I'm going to go ahead and leave that style to the professionals who can do it justice, and we're going to go ahead and move right along to my solo piece. Leah's class showed me some different styles to consider and methods for laying down my colors, but now it's up to me to put it into practice on something that I would normally do in an everyday situation. So this was actually the second piece that I attempted for the demonstration. The first piece was a backlit flamingo, which was really beautiful, and I thought it would be easy enough, but I ended up getting distracted by the soft, fluffy neck feathers, and things went awry really quickly in the textural realm. I had to take a step back and ask myself, well, I enjoyed most about this medium and what aspects I really wanted to play with. I love color blocking with this medium primarily because you can't do it with watercolor and I also love the hard edges and textures that you can get by using a flat brush. I decided to look through my old photographs and I pulled one that I took at the San Diego Zoo many years ago of a sweet pair of rhinos. It was a bit daunting to take on the prospect of painting two subjects instead of one, especially because I had already failed a painting and was feeling a bit defeated, but I decided just to go for it. I did decide to consult another class on Skillshare called Acrylic Painting by Rod Moore. Despite the class being on acrylics, the segments on blocking in color and adding highlights was really useful since this is not a technique I implement very often. I mentioned earlier that I decided to use a flat brush, and the reason why is that opposed to the round brushes I typically use for watercolor, I feel like they contribute a lot to the texture and the painterly style that I am in particularly so fond of. This painting took several hours, so obviously I couldn't show all of it here, but I did try and leave in moments where you could see me and my paintbrush kind of pausing and contemplating the next steps that I was taking. It was so fun to be challenged in this way and so freeing to be able to layer in highlights for a change. I feel like the paint strokes really tell a story about where the piece has gone through its journey of being painted. I hope that you guys enjoyed taking a look at gouache with me, and while it's not my very first time using it, it's still a very new to me medium and I have lots to learn. I'd love to know what your favorite brand of gouache is to use or who your favorite teacher is to watch on this medium, be it here on YouTube or over on Skillshare. Let us know in the comments below and don't forget that if you want to learn more about gouache or take some of the other amazing courses available over on Skillshare, the link in the description for a two month free trial is waiting for you. This mini series will continue once every three weeks between now and the end of January, so I look forward to seeing you for the next one where we'll be exploring water mixable oils, pretty much for my first time ever, so I look forward to seeing you for that. Thank you so much to my sponsor Skillshare for allowing me to finally dedicate the time to making this series and to my patrons for helping support this channel on a daily basis. Until next time, happy watercolor, gouache, or whatever other type of painting floats your boat.